Hello, this is Craig Mertens, Director of Product Education for GraphicsFlow, Inksoft, Printavo, and SignTracker. Welcome to our webinar today. Today, we're going to talk about supercharging your sales with the GraphicsFlow art portal, having the ability to collaborate with your customers on artwork, a way for them to interact with you, and the ability to edit these designs without having to go into a program on your computer, being able to do it in the cloud. If you need to have a file, got everything, and we load up new artwork. And if you want a cool outdoor theme, you can just go in here and type in outdoor and pull up an outdoor theme. So what do I mention outdoors? Let's say you were working with the summer camp and you just wanted to give them some ideas that you could localize for that summer camp. You could go into one of these designs and you can easily mod it up. So what if you wanted to do that and, and get it in front of the customer and, you know, or get it to in, in front of anybody that was doing camps? Well, what you would do is you would simply go into graphics flow and you'd click on customize. And then I kind of like the trout. It looks kind of cool. I think that's a rainbow trout. Pretty sure. Maybe a brown trout. So we're going to go over here and we're going to type in something different here. We'll go down here and type in Arizona. Down here, we're going to type in, let's see, summer. Then I could go in there and put camp counselors or do staff shirts or whatever I wanted. So I've created that. And let's say I want to prospect with Camp Town, Arizona. I want to earn their business. And maybe we'll do one maybe one little color change in here. I kind of like the brown, but let's see. Let's let's go crazy. Let's let's get some purple in there. Oh yeah, see, that works. And then this color right here, I think I'm going to go for kind of a fun little lightish blue maybe. And see where this color is right here. And see maybe more of a grayish color in there. Let's see. And I think the green works, but I think I'm going to take the green and maybe make it a little bit more teal. So I, I've localized this file. I want to give it, I want to get it in front of the customer. The first thing I need to do is save it. Now pay close attention here. I'm going to save it, but I'm going to save it to a folder and I'm going to call this camp design 01. And I'm going to create a new folder in graphics flow. Say create new folder. We're going to call it camp designs. I hit create. And then what I'm going to do is send it off to the customer, right? So what I would normally do is I would go and add it to an art approval. So once I save that design, so I'd go over here and create an art approval. I'd call it camp designs. Now it's not a bad way of doing it, but you, know, you can see it's a, it's a little bit, it's a little bit of work. And then I would have to do this anytime I want to get these in front of people and I wanted to have a personal experience with that customer, I would have to go through this process, which is still a, a great process and I think a productive process to earn sales, but you know, it's kind of time consuming. You can't, it's probably not what you'd consider to be practical at scale. And I believe I put that design into my just general my art folder because I wasn't paying attention. So watch what I'm doing, three dots, and I'm just going to say move. And I'm going to put it in camp designs. So here's what I wanted to show you. So if I go into my camp designs now, and we'll go into my art, and I'll go into camp. A couple things I probably want to do. Number one, on this design, I'm going to tag it. So I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to say edit tags, and I'm going to put a tag in here for trout. I'm going to put a tag in there for fish. And I'm going to put a tag in there for camp. Okay. And we're going to close that. But now I can add it to my art portal. And this is new. And this is a big deal. And so if I go over to this file and I can select it right here, or I can go over here to actions right here. And if I go over to actions, I can just say add to portal right now. And it's in my portal. Now it's going to be in alphabetical order by the design. It's going to be under camp designs, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to my portal so you can see what that actually looks like. So I'm just going to click on art portal and there it is. It's the second design in there, but here's where it gets interesting is if the customer clicks on this and they add it to a design request and they check out and tell us about your project. I need this by June 1. Oh, I could just use the date picker there to do the same thing. So we'll move over to June 1, and I'm working with the sales rep because these are customizable fields over here. 
So if you add your own fields, you can have the customer fill out whatever information they want to. We'll just go and click on that and they submit it. Here's the big deal. Because this is a design that I customized myself and I added it to the art portal from my customized designs, I can edit that design. And so when that design request comes in and I go over here and I see it and maybe I assign this over to a salesperson, guess what? I can go and edit that design again. So I'm we'll just create a variation. So you can create an experience where you can localize and customize your own designs. You can populate them into your art portal and then you can go back and very easily customize this again. Just go back here and customize it. And maybe we want to change it from Camp Tantazona to Camp Spirit Lake. And that's in Pine Top, Arizona. Hit enter. You know, we're not crazy about the colors. Maybe we want to make that a little smaller. And get those colors tuned up. It'll look totally different. We, if we use different colors, it's going to look totally different. So I'm going to kind of go back to some earthy tones. We'll go back to like a kind of a cream color in there. That's actually not too bad. It's pretty, depends on what color shirt you're going to put that on. This is how it really is going to look. But if you want to localize it, guess what? You have the ability to do that. And there's no, there's no real limits to this because what we're doing is we're taking a stock design, we're editing it, we're saving it, but it's still a stock design. The difference is this st stock design is now customizable. And so you can do this for all kinds of vertical markets and you can organize the files. If you're clever about how you name the files, you can get them to fall into a very specific order. So for instance, if you wanted to name all your camp files, you know, 01, and then you want to name all your sports files, 02, the prefix, they're all going to fall into to perfect order in your portal. And you can also bulk tag these files um, in multiples. You don't have to do it as a single file. I'll show you how to add additional files and how to disable them in a little bit. And so you would just save this file as a variation, save as new customized design. So it's not going to save over the original and save that in camp designs and just say continue customizing. So we'll save that. And if we click on continue customizing, I can yet make another variation. So why would you do that? Maybe you picked out a really good school design and you want to customize it for the top five schools in your area. You now have the ability to swap out that trout with an image from your own library because you can upload your own art to Graphics Flow now. Or you can grab grab artwork in your My Art that you've previously uploaded. Maybe you have the mascot for the customer already uploaded. You can swap all of that out now. And so you have all this flexibility to go and localize these designs for different groups, teams, organizations within your community. And it is super easy to update all that artwork in the portal on a periodic basis based on what's going on that time of the year. Maybe you want to do camp designs. Maybe you want to do a whole fall back to school sports designs. So let me show you how we set this whole thing up. You've seen kind of the, the gist of how it works, but let me show you how we would set that up. So the way you would set that up is if you go over to Art Portal, if you just click on this link right here, it's just going to take you to your online portal. We don't want to do that. What we want to do is we want to come over here and we want to click on Manage Settings. So we're going to go to Manage Settings. I'm going to walk through all these different settings and kind of explain what they mean and why it's important for you to be knowledgeable about how all this works. So first setting is enabled. So if this is enabled, that means this link's going to work. If this is disabled, it means the link's not going to work. So if you didn't want to shut your portal down for the, you know, the week that you're going to be on vacation, you can go and do that. It's really easy to turn it back on. But this is your shareable link right here. And if I copy that link and I paste that into a link for a web page. Maybe I go and create a web page on my Inksoft site. And then I, on that web page on my Inksoft site, the, when they click on that link, it goes to the portal. We can do that. You can do that on any website. You can do that on a Sage site, an ASI site, literally any site, Shopify site, anywhere you want to put it. And the neat part about that is that link will collect all the orders from all those different sites and funnel them into graphics flow for you. So that's what that shareable link is. But let's take a look at stock art assets. This is a relatively new feature. 
you now have the ability to go in not only to turn design ideas on or off or clip art on or off or fonts on or off. You can just turn it off if you don't want to show clip art, for instance, or fonts. But you also have the ability to come in and turn off categories. And so if there was maybe you only wanted to have sports categories in here, you could go in here and turn off everything but sports. You have the ability to put in keywords. And then you also have the ability that will omit the art from the portal. And then you also have the ability now to go in and select which category shows first. Now, this is important. On my portal, I'm having the sports category show first. And I'm going to show you some examples of portals that everybody's other customers have done. And nobody's done this. None of them have gone in and done like a specific category to come up first. They're all kind of defaulting to the newest artwork first. But if you did this and you selected sports, what would happen is the sports artwork would come up first and the newest sports artwork would come up at the top. And so this is pretty handy. And you can do that same thing for clip art and you can do the same thing for fonts. Some people like to turn the fonts off. I like leaving the fonts in there because sometimes the customers, they have a very clear vision of what they're looking for. And I don't want to have to go and buy a font or dig through the internet trying to find something similar. I just want to tell them, hey, go to my portal and you want that cute little scripty font. I like to call them sloppy scripts. You know, they look kind of handwritten. So it's a very popular look. People use it in home decor and signs and t-shirts and all kinds of fun stuff. So instead of having to go in and try to locate a file and I can just say, hey, just go to the portal and select the font you want and we'll we'll make that work in your design. Perfect. And then also over here, my, my art assets, this is where you can add your own art. And so if you need a little tune up on how that might work, you can click on that little link and it gives you instructions, but it's really simple. Right now I have it set to say featured designs. Right now I could have that say featured camp designs. If I wanted to do that just for this month, just camp designs or back to school designs. So I just changed that. Display stock art before my art. I have that unchecked because I want my featured designs to come up first. I want those to be the first things that my customers see because those are more than likely going to be localized to businesses and schools and things in my area. And I think it puts your best foot forward. Also, you get to choose what's displayed. So that's kind of awesome. And then you also have a button here. It says disable my art assets in the portal. Well, why would you disable it? Here's why. As soon as I added a file to my portal, it was live on my portal. It was live immediately. So maybe I want to curate and add a whole bunch of different files to my portal. Uh, what I could do is just go and turn this off while I was adding files. And then once I got everything added, I can just go over here and disable it or toggle off disable. Um, I'm going to go ahead and update view settings. So you can kind of see how that works. And then we're going to scroll down here. I've added all these hypertext links into my portal because prior to having the ability to add my own artwork into the portal, the only way I could do that is create an art approval and then link that art approval into the portal. I'll show you guys what, what that looks like. The disadvantage of it is there's no lead collection form. So it's just static art and there's no lead collection form at all. And I, when I do these art approvals, I set them so it's view only so people can't comment. If you don't send them to view only using a view only link, what's going to happen is everybody's going to see everybody else's comments because it's a collaboration tool. A couple other things in here, add additional links. You could add my Facebook link if I wanted to. Do I want to add the need help option? I can do that. It's a little video that shows you how to work with the, the art portal. Display contact us. I think that's smooth because that's actually another form of a lead collection. It's just a form they can go ahead and click on. And then you also have the design request form. And so some big changes that we made to the design request form earlier in the year was this. You can add custom fields. And so these four fields are locked, which is first name, last name, email, and phone number. We assume everybody wants to use those fields. And then you can add a, a custom field. So let's see, we got, tell us about your project. Please specify your in-hand date for your project. Who is your sales? And I'll add a new custom field. And we'll call this... Um, uh, drop down, select, and the first field um, is going to be, we're going to call this, do you have any money? And field choices, um, we're going to say, no, I am broke. And then the next line, I'm going to say, yes, I won the lottery. And no, but I am a really nice person. So I just created a, a field and I can make that field required or not. I'm not going to make it required, but I'm going to click on apply. 
And that's kind of an important field. So I'm going to drag and drop that at the top. <laughs> so we're pre-qualifying them. And then just make sure that you want to click on update design request form when you're done. You'll notice I've enabled the function upload art here. So if the customer wants to upload source artwork or maybe they have a specific mascot they want for that design, they can do that. And I think that's pretty handy. So we're going to go ahead and update that design request. And let's see what we got. So I'm going to click on the link to the art portal. And let's see what we got here. So there's our camp design right in there. It's kind of blended in with all my other designs. I named them so they all kind of, all these East Eagles designs kind of come together. If the customer wants to see everything, they can go over here and just go back to design ideas just like it would normally work. You can put any kind of description you want in here. So if you want to put some clear instructions that say, hey, um, to see the full design collection, um, click on design ideas. So you can make some additional instructions. That set of instructions is actually in the portal. At the bottom, if they scroll to the bottom, it says, hey, looking for more content, click on the browse menu right there. And then if they go and submit this design, like we did before, there's a new field in here. And that new field is the, do you have any money field? So let's see here. Nope, I am broke. So there you go. That's how you, that's how you add a custom field there. And you notice I have the upload art option and... We're at this point we're we're ready to go. So because I don't want that custom field to be in there, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back here and I'm gonna delete it. So I'm gonna say delete and I'm gonna update that. And let's see what else I might do. Feature designs. I'm just gonna say this is feature designs again. We get rid of the word camp in there. And then in this case, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say display stock art before my art, and then let's refresh that portal. And now what you're seeing is the, the standard stock designs in there. And if they want to see feature designs, they'd come over here and click on feature designs or whatever you have that named. So that's the the process of setting this up. And there's some, some pretty clever, cool things that you can do when you're setting these up. So one of the things you can do is if you go back and add tags to the file, um, it'll automatically update. You know, it's, it's synced to the file that's stored. So if you add a tag to that file, it'll update here automatically. If you change the name of the file, it'll up update here automatically. Um, I believe we put in a keyword for camp. We'll do a keyword for fish. It's only going to search in the featured designs area. It's not going to pull in designs from my other categories unless I go back to design ideas. But that's how it works. Also, that green check mark there is indicating that I've got that sitting in my submitted design um, form. And so it's, it's just sitting in here and if the customer wants to remove it, they can. And if they come back here, it's not checked anymore. And let's get rid of that so we can see everything. So how do I organize this and structure it? Because, you know, I might put something in here and then I get tired of it or I might want to replace it or freshen it up. So let me show you how to organize that. So if we come over here and we go into that camps folder, designs, what I can do is just click on this design and just say remove from portal and it's gone. If I'm not sure what's in the portal or what isn't, I can go and view by, hey, not in portal and added to portal. So it's just super easy for me to screen the designs out. And so one of the things that's awesome about that is you can also go in if you choose to, let's go to design ideas and my art and I'm gonna go into my central cougars folder and I've got lots of really neat designs in here as well, I can just do bulk uploads. So just go over here, click on, you know, these four designs right here and go to bulk actions, add to art portal, add some tags there if I wanted to. And now these designs are in my portal. And again, if I want to remove them, all I need to do is go to added to art portal and then I can selectively remove them or I can select them all and remove them. That's how it works. And so you can do this from any design that you've saved to my art. And so there's one kind of big caveat. If it's a design that you have accessed in graphics flow, let's say it's a design that you just went into graphics flow and you went in and maybe you wanted to add a piece of clip art. Okay. So you can go into clip art right now if you want, and you can add that to art approval, but maybe it was a design template and you want to add that to your portal. You're, you can add it right here. You see where it says add to portal? 
but it's going to look exactly like this design is. It's just going to say Surf Life. So if you come in here, you just add it from design ideas right here. Basically, think of it as like creating a favorites. It's not going to be localized. And so as a result of that, it's going to be the same design that every graphics flow user has. So by going into the design and customizing it and maybe just doing some things like changing the fonts around or changing the colors around, you can have your own completely customized localized designs that are unique to you and unique to your business. And, you know, if you've been on the webinars before, one of the things that you'll hear me talk about is it's just a placeholder for a fresh idea. You know, if we have this design right here and I'm not really vibing with palm trees, you know, I can just turn the palm trees off. Um, maybe I want to take these palm trees and turn them on and swap these out with lacrosse sticks. That'd be interesting. So replace click bar, go over here, type in lacrosse, see what we got, some cross sticks. I want something probably about like that. There you go. So I want to click on apply to accept it. And let's take a look at that car and let's see, we'll put a tiger mascot in there. Why not? So we'll go and replace that with the tiger. And let's see, we'll do this one. Ooh, I like this cartoon. That's kind of like Tony the tiger. So let's go in there and add Tony the tiger there. And I come over here and I don't need just add water. We can get rid of that. And I'm trying to do something a little bit more collegiate. So West Coast, let's go and change that font. And let's do a script font in there. Why not? So I'm just going to go on my fonts and I'm going to type in script and let's see, we'll go with the classic. So we're going to go down here and do one of the DAS sports scripts. This is the classic sports script. And because I've got this in all caps, we're going to change this to anyways to tigers. So we're going to come over here and change this to tigers and let's make it a little bit bigger and don't need bar and cafe. So we're going to turn that off. And then Surf Life. So we're going to go with like a, I think a collegiate font in there. And if you do a collegiate font in here, it is going to be very different looking. So if you, if I went over here and just went over to like just the game day font right here, actually that looks pretty cool. And then we'll change the text. So make it a single color. And then this over here, we'll just call this is going to be West View. Hit enter, and then colors. So what I'm going to do is come down here, and the colors are going to start combining a bunch of colors up. So I'm going to take all of this and make it orange. Apply. I'm going to take all of this, make that orange. Apply. And I'm going to take the purple and make it the black. And then the sticks, I think the sticks should be orange as well. It looks like we have two colors of that, that bluish teal in there. So we'll combine both of those. That would have looked cooler with gray. So I can change this independently and then change that to gray just by itself. And let's see here, Westview. I don't want to have to deal with the extra color blue in there. So let's kind of consolidate that down. And we'll make the blue this gray. And then we'll make this gray the same gray. So we got one less gray in there now. And so I'm just going through here and just knocking these colors down. We've got the file all set up and it's it's ready to go. I save it. So I go over here and I'm going to put it in a folder and we'll call this local schools. So I'll create a new folder. And then make sure I save into that folder. And this is this next part is really important because the, the, what you name this file is going to be where it, it lands. So if I go over here and just say 01, and then we call this Westview, it's going to be the first file we see. So what I would do is spend a little bit of time and going in and setting these files up so that it shows local businesses, local schools, local things in my area because... Even if you're not doing business with that organization or group, it adds credibility and it makes it look like you're doing business with that. So instead of just having a bunch of kind of placeholder text in all these designs, because that's really what this is, you've now localized that design 
for a specific school in your area. And so I'm going to go over here and go into that folder right here. I'm going to tag this real quick. Tiger, which was a tag we already had in there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add it to my portal. There we go. And I'm going to go back into my portal. I'm going to change the setting so that my designs show up first. And there you go. That's what you can do. And to me, this is one of the most effective sales tools that you can utilize. Now, here's the thing. You have to promote this. People have to, to know that you have it. Just putting it up on your website and leaving it there, unless you put a very prominent button on your website, it might not be noticeable. Now, bear in mind, this graphics art portal right here can be a standalone page. Now, mine is a little different because I've gone and connected mine to my domain that I buy. I pay $20 a year for so I can preserve craigmertens.com. And so you notice my domain name's craigmertens.com because I went into my GoDaddy account and just basically did a redirect from craigmertens.com to my portal page. So the customer doesn't see the portal page. But if you just drop the portal into a website, you're going to see the link. And it's not the end of the world, but it's always more fun to actually connect it to a page. So if you have a tool like, say you had Inksoft, you had a tool like Inksoft or doesn't really matter, Sage or ASI, you can always link, create a page and just have that portal link be the main link for that page. You can always do that, but there's a lot of different ways that you can feature the portal on your site. And you remember I talked about adding these little galleries in here in the dropdown. This is kind of the old way of doing it using art approvals. I think the new way of doing it is a lot more effective and user-friendly, which is just adding it in here because now we also have the lead collection form. So I'm going to kind of show you just a few websites and implementations of folks that are using the portal. I'm going to go over here to uh, the good folks at Duluth. So if you go to their homepage right here, Duluth Screen Printing, they've got a really, I think, an attractive fit page. I think it looks very professional and they've got a very focused link. So they move. And so it's just really something that gets your attention. And they also put some pretty good descriptors in here. And they embedded their portal as an iframe into their website. So it looks very seamless here. And they actually compressed it a little bit. So it's in a, in a two row. They know how to do a little bit of hacking on HTML. They just created a web page. The page is, the art portal is embedded out of that web page. They have the description here. It's very prominently, prominently focused on their main page. So create quote, it's not buried up here. So here's another example right here. And we'll go to the good folks who are at Apparel Shack and working with these folks for a long time. They do a huge volume in these Richardson hats. I'll show you something else that you could do with these Richardson hats, which would be kind of fun. But they have a little button over here, prominent graphics, go to the portal, pretty straightforward. So they created an intermediary landing page before you go to the portal. And then they also put the, a little link here, need help, and it goes to the little tutorial. So they customize this as well and they're leaving it in the stock layout which is three up and this is mobile responsive so you notice if i zoom in or zoom out thumbnails get bigger so i think that's a really nice implementation this one is interesting because they use the word free art and i, I understand why they do that because for seo if you use the word free art you're going to get a lot of people hitting your website and they have a, i think they have a really nice looking page it says discover your perfect design free artwork awaits explore our vast collection of 6,000 ready to print designs. Perfect for every occasion. Choose your favorites and click on get pricing and share the artwork number, desired text and color changes. Our team will swiftly provide a personalized quote for you. So if you go over here and go to quick pricing, you can go and put a little form in here. It's kind of interesting. And if you go over here, then it would just be a standard process where they go in and, and submit it. So it looks like they're giving you two options for doing that. Um, if you go this route, you have to hit the design number. You have to include the design number. That's pretty smart because you can you can bypass the whole art submission part here and just grab the design and go here as well. So I think it's pretty clever. Over here, I think it's a really attractive looking website. Very clean, very simple, gets to the point, checks all the boxes. You've got you know the services you're offering. You've got, you know, explanation of what you do. 
It's just kind of a neat little graphic in here. Get in touch, the contact form, and then talk about getting your online line store, what we can do for you. Let's get connected. And, and you've got the little um, lead collection form, and then you got your social media links down here. I think a really nice little website. Now, this gallery right here, this is going to products. Design ideas is up over here. And again, they did a, a little iframe, and they're using the stock HTML, which is a four-up layout, which I think is the best layout, in my opinion. A couple more. Let's take a look at this one. Nice, bright, vibrant website. If we go to the homepage, big, prominent button here. I love that. Design ideas. And it goes straight to the portal. They've got a really big iframe in here so you can really see what's going on. Um, whoever set this up did a phenomenal job. It just This is one of the... I think one of the better implementations. And then this is just a standard Sage store. This this whole store is built on Sage, this big prominent button right here, design ideas. So how are people using this? There's, there's two ways to use it. Number one way is passive, right? You just put it on your website and people just stumble over it. And are you going to really generate a lot of activity from that? Well, if you're spending big bucks on SEO, you might, but you know, you're not custom ink or rush order tees, so you're probably not spending a million dollars a month on SEO. But you will, you will have people that will just stumble on it. The way you utilize this is when you're working with your customers. You know, you're working with a new customer. And one of my clients gave me this verbiage, and I think it's really smart. He says, hey, listen, I can do custom artwork for you. I can. But I charge $75 an hour. There's a two-hour minimum. And then I'll give you one revision. But after that, it's another 75 bucks an hour. So the average cost of a, me to develop something for you. It's about $200 because my time is valuable and I'm a graphic designer and I can't just do that work for free. And I don't know how much you're going to order. Um, you know, if you're going to order, you know, $5,000, I can, I can cook it into your deal, but that's one way. And I need seven, you know, five to seven days to get something done. Plus there'll be time for revisions. But I, if you go to my website and there's a little button that says design ideas. If you click on that and you find something you're looking for and you can just find something by style, you don't have to look at subject matter. Just find something you connect with visually. I'll change the text. I'll change the colors. Just give me kind of the instructions for what you're looking for. If there's a font you like or a clip art image you like, or maybe you have your own, you know, mascot you want to upload, you can do that. And guess what? That'll come into me. I'll be immediately notified that you did it. I'll take a look at it. It's not going to take me very long to customize it. And I'll bounce it back to you. And I can get that back to you the same day. And you know what? I don't have to charge you any art charges at all. You'll still get something really customized. But because I have a starting point, I can get going really quick and you can get a, I can get that idea firmed up so we can move on with your order. And you don't have to pay for art. You don't have that five to seven day delay. Everybody's a happy person. And I promise you that when I get done with it, you won't even recognize the original design. But you're just giving us that huge head start by starting out with the graphic. And I thought that was really, really smart. And the interesting part about that particular situation is the person that gave me that verbiage was the graphic designer and his wife had some of an intervention with him saying, listen, you can't continue to do all this high end custom work for these small orders. We're trying to grow and scale and we just can't do it. If you're spending two hours on a 24 piece t-shirt order design, it just doesn't work that way. And so to me, that was, I thought it was very smart that that customer came about that strategy on its own. And that was neat because then I can share that with that strategy with you. But let me show you another way of utilizing this. And I know there's quite a few Aixop people that are on the, the webinar right now. In this store, we have the portal. We've got quite a few things in this store. Number one, I use this in a, a SNS Activer webinar. So I use some embed code to embed the SNS Activewear catalog, this Activewear Style Guide 2024, into my Aixop store. So that was that's pretty easy. All I have to do is go over here and go to... The HTML code. I just went to SNS's website and I copied the link and I said, went into chat GPT and said, Hey, can you write an iframe for this? And, um, I pasted that in here. Chat GPT was kind enough to give me the code and boom, I've got the catalog embedded right in there. iframe. Chat GPT wrote all this code for me. In this site, I also added the Augusta sportswear uniform builder. And again, Augusta was kind enough to give me the HTML code for this. They provide this for customers as an embed. And the customer uh, had requested this, you know, as a feature in their Inksoft store. And I said, hey, cool, can you get the, the source code from Augusta? And they sent her this nice little email with the HTML code. And then I just copied that in there. 
But I did the same thing with the portal. And in the portal, all I did is just copy the portal in here. And this was just right out of right out of graphics flow. I didn't do anything out of the ordinary. I just went into my graphics flow account. I went into my settings for art portal. I went down here and grabbed the embed code, which is right in here. Just copied it. So I'm just going to go down here to art portal and edit page. And then I'm going to get rid of this for right now. I'm just going to go down here and just get rid of it. Say done. Yep. And then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to say manage content. And I'm going to paste that code in here and hit done. And there it is. Now it might be fun to go to chat. I haven't tried the new chat GPT, but let's see what we can have it do. Uh, create a caption above the iframe, the copy, choose a design in 36 point point cabin font, which is a standard Google font and center above iframe. We got to grab the source code out of here. So I'm going to grab that and let's see what ChatGPT does. And the cool part when you do this is you can still, if you know how to hack, you know, HTML, you're, I mean, you know, I, don't, I can't really hack HTML, but I know how to go in here and change the font name. So, or the point size. So we created this. Let's see what it came up with. And it tell, what's funny is it tells you how it did it too. So we'll copy the code in there and go to manage content, delete the existing code and see what we get. Yeah, there you go. That's it. And if I want to be a hacker, I can just go down here to manage content, click on this and I can hack away at this if I want to and change this to 24 point hit OK or I can just go over here and go to manage content and just highlight it and change it over here too that's the power of ChatGPT being able to write HTML code to customize these blocks and create a custom experience for your art portal if you're going to embed this and this doesn't have to be exclusive to Inksoft. If you have the ability to edit HTML in any web development platform, you can do this. It's just you're using ChatGPT to, to write the code. I didn't have to go into Inksoft first. I could have taken that code right from GraphicsFlow and gone into ChatGPT and have it write it. So I don't have to bring it in here first. So it's just a, a really clever way to update your website and add components. And Inksoft has this amazing component here, which is called the content block, uh, which enables me to take any kind of HTML code and create blocks of visuals or text or graphics and incorporate it into my Inksoft site. And I just, I find that feature to be super useful. So that's the, the basic concept of what you can now do with the graphics floor art portal, the ability to feature your own designs, go in there and update designs periodically, daily, monthly, um, you could upload a design just for a single appointment because you now have this incredible flexibility. And one of the things that I really enjoy about this is I now can also upload virtual samples. Now, I didn't create this virtual sample in Graphics Flow. I created the virtual sample here in the actual Inksoft platform. But if I have a virtual sa sample and I upload a JPEG or a PNG file, it's now displayed in my portal as well. I created these designs from Graphics Flow. And I brought them into the Inksoft designer and I saved them and I grabbed the link for the design because each one of these designs has a link right here. And I created the thumbnail. I just went over here to next and I used a screen grab utility that I use and saved this as a PNG file. This is just the snipper that's built into win Windows. I actually added these images into my content block, grabbed the code, went to chat GPT and I said, hey, can you align these three across for me and link each one of those thumbnails to the sharing link. I actually gave him a, li a list of links. I said, hey, the top left image is this link, the middle image is this link, and the right image is this link. And look what it did. Perfect. And I took that a step further over here because I went into my drawing software and just took this file out of graphics flow and converted it to embroidery real quick. doesn't have to be perfect uh, for sewing. It just has to look good. So I really increased the density of the design so that it looks really good in embroidery. And I got rid of all the jump stitches. And then I just brought this part here. And this part right here is all text that I just added. 
in Inksoft. And so you can go over here, East Eagles Baseball. If you wanted to add a baseball image, you could do that. And then what I would do, if this was processed out as an order, I would open the file up, use keyboard lettering fonts, because that was all keyboard lettering, that font, use the same font, and type in baseball. I wouldn't have to digitize anything. I can just name drop it. Richardson 112 cap, courtesy of SNS Activewear. This photo came from the Inksoft Rapid Product Creator, so I didn't have to go and cut it down. The ability to leverage the art and graphics flow into your Inksoft designer, I think is really impressive. Being able to take the portal and incorporate it into your website, whether it's Inksoft or another platform, putting a prominent button or link on the top of your homepage with an explanation of how you can utilize the artwork to submit a design request. And my last part of this one that I love is I created this editable graduation sign in here too. So if you want to have a graduation sign that the customer can go in and name drop, you can do that too. Guess where that artwork came from? Graphics Flow. This is the collaborative capability of the Graphics Flow tool. The whole idea in today's marketplace, because there's been such a shift to e-commerce and online purchasing, you just have to make it easy for your customer. That's it. That's the trick to the whole deal. You don't have to spend a whole ton of money on you know search engine optimization. You're directing your customers here. You're sending out an email saying, hey, this is a new capability. You're pinning a post on your Facebook you put a note up on Instagram, hey, check out our new graphics for the month of May. And you go and add 10 new graphics to your portal that are all customized. They're ones that you really connect with. Or maybe even a design you created in CorelDRAW or Illustrator or Photoshop or Canva for that matter. And get those fresh ideas in front of the customers. You can update that featured page daily, hourly, or monthly, whenever you want to. So it's just an incredible tool to make it easy for your customers to buy from you and to grow your revenue, and most importantly, squeeze out the competition. Thank you so much for joining me today on Graphics Flow Academy, and we'll see you on the next one. Mm-hmm.